It's been a while since I've done an Etsy dropshipping tutorial, so in this video, I'm gonna take you through how I create a few different designs as examples. When I first started, I did everything myself by hand, and it took me a long time to create a design. But now there's been some really cool softwares that I've found that have made this so much easier, and I create designs so much faster now. I do outsource a lot to a graphic designer, but sometimes I create my own designs as well. And so I wanna show you a few different examples of how I'm able to use these softwares to create really cool designs, put them up on Etsy, and then if they sell, I make money. Now, if you're unfamiliar, I do a form of drop shipping on Etsy called Print On Demand. I use a company called Printful who handles all the shipping, the logistics, the tracking information, right? They literally put the tracking number into my order automatically in the back end of my Etsy shop for me. So once I put the design up, it's 100% hands off. They do everything for me. I don't need to spend any more time on the listing. The only thing that I need to do every once in a while is maybe answer a message on Etsy, but it rarely happens. And and the great thing about Printful is they don't charge you any money up front. It's not like you need to actually pay for the service to start utilizing it. They only take a small portion of the profit after you make sales, right? So the only thing that you need to spend is 20 cents per every listing that you want to create on Etsy and the time invested in creating the listings, right? It's just your sweat equity. So that's why I love that company. If you want to know how to set up your Printful account, you can just search YouTube. It's really easy. Or you can just sign up for Printful on their website and they'll actually walk you through through how to connect it into your Etsy account. From there, once you have Printful set up, you're going to need a graphic design software as well, right? So if you wanna use Photoshop, that's totally fine. Or you can use a free software like Canva. Now, Canva used to be kind of, if you used it, you were kind of handcuffed, right? But since there's so many new cool AI tools out there now, Canva has actually introduced a suite of their own AI tools in the back end of Canva. So you can utilize them if you want to, it's really, really cool. Now. I primarily create mugs and t-shirts with some other things like aprons sprinkled in, for example. But in this example, I'm gonna run you through how to create some t-shirt designs and we're gonna have some fun with it. So if we were gonna use Canva, we'd create a shirt by going up to create a design and then we'd input the specific aspect ratio, which is best for t-shirts, which is 4,500 by 5,400. And then we would create a new design. And you can see there, it gives us the template to start working with, and then we'd be able to upload our pictures. Now I prefer Photoshop, so that's what I'm gonna use but they both work fine, you can utilize either. So one of the most effective ways that you can start drop shipping and really start increasing your sales relatively quickly is by seeing what's working for other sellers on the platform already and also doesn't have like a lot of competition, right? And then just replicate those designs with your own spin on them. I'm not saying copy, people get like all worked up when I say this. I'm not saying just go out and blatantly copy someone's design. I'm saying figure out what's working for other people and then use it as inspiration, adjust things slightly and put your own spin on it. If you think about anything, right? Like the top drop shippers, what do they do? They snipe other drop shippers. They copy quote unquote. Kobe Bryant copied MJ, right? That's how he was so good. He took inspiration from MJ's moves and the things that he was doing. And that's how he accelerated his growth. And it's just the same in any business, especially with print on demand drop shipping. So if we were going to do that, what I typically do is I'll open up an incognito browser and I'll start searching on Etsy. So whether I'm on just like Etsy.com and I'm searching around to see what's suggested for me, and then I'll search for those keywords. So for example, like this pops out at me right off the bat, like we won't go back. I've shown this countless times in other tutorials, so I'm not gonna go too in depth in like product research like this, cause you can watch the other tutorials in the Etsy dropshipping playlist. So if I wanted to look at this, I'd potentially go defend Roe v. Wade. And then I would search that in Etsy to see if that was too saturated or something that I want to go after, right? So it looks like this does have a lot of designs around Roe v. Wade, but it might be something that you might want to get into. You'd have to look a little bit more in depth into it. Another way that you could do it is you could find a hot selling design, right? So if you're finding like a design that's selling, for example, like we searched through this, this is the very first one that's ranked after all the ads. And the fact that people are running ads to that is a good sign. So that is the one that we were already on before. It does have reviews already and it's ranked first. So we know it's probably selling well. So what we would do is we'd come down, we'd find the person's shop, we'd look at their shop and we'd either click their sales if this button was clickable to see what has sold for them recently and figure out the best designs that way, right? Reverse engineer their best selling listings. Or what we could do is we could just come down to the reviews, see what's also sold recently, and then go from there. Now, this is a perfect example of this. As you can see here, like the American flag t-shirt, because it's almost Memorial Day when I'm recording this. So clearly those are selling well, and that's proof. And that's one way that you can approach it, just doing like product research on Etsy and reverse engineering other sellers' top listings. Now, when I was doing this earlier, which gave me the idea to actually record this video, 
I stumbled upon this design right here that seemed somewhat promising. And it's this funny evolution shirt where it's like evolution, like where the last guy saying like, stop, we messed up, go back, which is kind of funny. It didn't seem too saturated, but it did seem like there were other people competing. And one of the other designs that I saw that was very similar, but where somebody already took their own spin on it was this one right here, weekly coffee evolution, where they have small coffee and the coffee gets slightly bigger every single day up until, you know, Friday or the end of the week where they actually have an espresso martini. And that's really funny and it's really cool. Now, if I was creating this in the past, right, in former tutorials, what I would say is you'd have to go out and find graphics that look like this and then create this entire design from scratch, which can be tedious and take a long time if you're not good at graphic design, or you would have to hire a graphic designer who is good at it to create the design for you. But again, they can either be expensive because you'd have to train somebody to actually figure out how to do this. So expensive, like time-wise in training or expensive to actually get a design like this, because let's say they charge you five or, you know, 10 or 20 bucks for a design design, well, that's only one design. And then like, you have to constantly do that to create a bunch of designs that are selling and it can be expensive, but you no longer need to do that. So if I wanted to just create this picture, what I would do is I'd open up the picture to where it's maximized. I would take a little snippet of this right here, save it as coffee. So what you could do is you could go to this tool instead, which is remove.bg. And what this tool does is it automatically removes the background for you 100% free. You no longer need to use Photoshop and like cut around it really slow. This will do it with AI automatically. So let's upload the image and we'll see what it gives us. And hopefully it will cut out the coffees and just leave us without the background and we'll only have the coffees. There we go. Bang. How cool is that? Like it, it took the coffees out. It also somehow knew like that was the heat coming off of it. Also cut out the espresso martini and then you just download this and bam, it should be a, a transparent PNG image that you could put on a different color. And then if you wanted to create this design in here, you just upload that picture, whether you're using Canva or Photoshop, you drag this over, which is crazy that that actually did that. There we go. And then if we want to make it transparent and keep it PNG so we could put it on a t-shirt, we just hide the background image. This is Photoshop 101. It's nothing special. And then I could make my own text on the bottom and say something completely different, right? So like, let's just as a placeholder, put that there, drag it up a little bit. Obviously I'd edit this text a little bit. So instead of saying like weekly coffee evolution, what I could basically do is I could put like an M under here with my own text. I'm just going to delete this just to show you. I could put an M under here, then a T for Tuesday, a W for Wednesday, a T for Thursday, an F for Friday. People would get the picture. And I think that that would sell pretty well. So I could do it that way. Another way that I actually like to create designs as well is I'll take a popular brand, right? Because on Etsy, you can't actually upload popular brands, right? You have to avoid brand logos like Target or Walmart or Starbucks is one that I didn't realize in the past I was gonna get an IP complaint on or Star Wars or anything like that. Or obviously like popular movies or popular TV shows. But like, let's say like, for example, Shit's Creek. One of the things that's been working really, really well for me on t-shirts and on mugs as well is like putting cartoonized versions of these people that are recognizable via cartoon, but won't get you an IP claim on Etsy, right? Because if I were to just upload a picture of like David or any of these people, then I would get an IP claim because you can't do that. You're not allowed to do that on Etsy. But if instead I took these people and then I cartoonize them first and then put them on a mug or a t-shirt, I can do that. And I can put like a famous thing that they're quoting saying. So like as an example right here, right? So like Ted, if I wanted to take this picture of Ted, I'd save it as, we'd say Ted, didn't save it as an image. So let's go back, we'll grab the image of Ted, save it as Ted three. Then I would take it into a software like befunky.com, which again, you can use 100% free to cartoonize images like this. There's a million other examples out there. This is not the only one. This is just one that I use frequently. And then what you do is you drag and drop your picture in there. So we drag Ted in there, there he is. Now we cartoonize him and bam. Now that's not the best example. Sometimes there's other better examples, but uploading a picture like that, for example, is not going to get you a copyright strike or an IP claim because that's recognizable as Ted, but not so recognizable that it's like, this is a Shit's Creek character, right? That's a bad example of a picture. Let me grab a better one. Let's take David because he also has some good sayings as well. We're going to cut this picture of David out anyway, right? So we're going to cartoonize it and then trim around it with the tool that I just showed you before. So that's how we're going to cartoonize him and then take his actual image, right? But you'll notice on Be Funky, it puts this little watermark here as well. So you can either upgrade and pay and then you'll be able to down download these pictures easily. Or I know a lot of people are trying to avoid costs as well, and I don't even pay for this service. So one of the easy workarounds for it is you can just take a snippet image of it afterwards, but you don't want this to be in your picture. So just make sure that on the left side, you take a snippet a little further than the picture is. So this is what I mean by that. We're going to come back to David. We're going to take a snippet of David, but instead of just taking a snippet of 
around David. We're going to go a little bit more left like this, because this doesn't matter. We're going to take, we're going to cut him out anyway afterwards. So we'll say David, then we'll come back to be funky. We're going to go upload David now. And there he is. Okay. So now we're going to cartoonize him, see how it put the B funky down here, but that doesn't matter to us. Cause that's not going to be part of our image anyway. And there he is David cartoonized pretty good. Now, if I wanted to use him here, I would just take a snippet of him like this. There we go. You see like cartoon David. And now if I wanted to cut him out, I would just take him back into remove.bg, right? Upload an image, cartoon David, and it's going to cut cartoon David out for us automatically. There it is. Now we can use him on a mug, a t-shirt or whatever. So we download it and now we bring him back into Photoshop. There we go. This isn't the best example, but you get the picture and you want to make sure that they're very cartoonized as well. This probably should be a little bit more cartoonized just to be safe, but I'm just trying to give you examples and, and ideas here that you can run with. Now, one of the things that's been working really well for me recently is to like David from Schitt's Creek funniest quotes or funniest sayings. And then what you could do is you could just put these quotes that are recognizable to a lot of people underneath a cartoonized version of David on t-shirts or on mugs. And they'd sell fairly well because a it's not super recognizable as David enough where you get an IP claim but it is recognizable enough to somebody that's a fanatic about this show and would also understand the quote. So they might be even searching for that quote on a mug or a t-shirt and you could sell it that way. So for example, you could literally put like, I'm trying very hard not to connect with people right now. And you put that on there as well. And it's that easy. Again, simplicity sells so much better than like trying to create some in-depth, crazy looking design that's super aesthetically pleasing. So that's another way that you could approach it. One more way is creating AI designs. Now I've been playing around with this lately and it's really cool. You can kind of get really creative with this if you want to. Two of the ones that I like to use are Photor or Midjourney. You can sign up for Midjourney on Discord and just for free, actually just find AI designs. Photor is one that you do have to buy credits for. I like it. It's a little bit easier and it's not like if you're using the free one on Midjourney, it gets like super packed in there and everybody's constantly chatting at once and it's really hard to kind of get your designs and it's like chaos. So I kind of like Photor a little bit better. So as you can see here, here's one that I was playing around with creating Philadelphia Phillies. I just had it saying like Philadelphia Phillies winning the World Series and you kind of just give it different prompts and it comes up with AI art based on that. I was going to take a cutout of it looks like they kind of create try to create Bryce Harper there. I was going to cut them out and then put like Philly forever with the PH instead of like forever with it with an F. I think that that shirt would sell pretty well. Just again, that came to mind because I'm a Philly guy and I wanted to create the shirt and I think it would sell well. So I take a shot at it. Another one that I saw that would go well was like a gamer girl shirt, right? So I created this one right here, which was a gamer girl shirt. So if I download this because there's a lot of search traffic for things like gamer girls on Etsy and it's not super competitive right now. So I download this gamer girl shirt that looks kind of like she's a futuristic person. And then again, I would take it into remove.bg. I would up load the image. I would download the transparent PNG without the background. I would then take that one into Photoshop. There we go. Now you could put text here or you could literally just put her on a shirt and we're going to hide the background and save it. And I put gamer girl on like a weird text just to kind of see if that hits. I'm not sure if I like this text a lot, so maybe I would change it, but just to kind of show you if I wanted to upload this design, I would then export it as a PNG gamer girl. And now since we don't have like another proven Etsy design to use their SEO and kind of model after, what we can do is we can ask chat GPT to come up with good keywords that we can then put into our listing. So for example, if I go to chat GPT and I say, I'm creating an Etsy listing about a gamer girl that plays video games, just trying to give chat GPT uh, some information, suggest 20 other relevant keywords that I could put into my listing title and description that would help get more sales and we'll see what it says. So gaming enthusiast, video, video game lover, Twitch streamer, gaming addict, gaming queen, esports enthusiast. And I could put all these into my listing, right? So then if I want to do that, I would obviously put these in my description, kind of make sure that it reads well, but also that these are in there. I'd put some of them in my title as well. I would upload my design to Printful. So if I come into Printful and then we just find a t-shirt design. So then we'd come into Printful, right? We'd go into our store. We'd add women's clothing because this is a women's t-shirt. We'd find a t-shirt that we liked on Printful. You could also put this on a sweatshirt as well if you wanted to. So then once you create the design, you have the keywords, right? You then go into your Printful store. You'd pick out a specific shirt that you like. So you'd search for women's shirts. You'd find the women's shirt that you like. 
You'd upload that design into the women's shirt and then you'd add the keywords in the listing and set the price. It's really that easy. I'm not going to show you that here because I've done that in countless tutorials before. So if you want to learn how to do that, just check out the playlist on this channel called Etsy dropshipping. And that's really like the three or four main ways that I'm finding designs to create that are either already selling well and proven or designs that I think have a high likelihood of selling well in the future. And the reason I think that this is such a good opportunity is obviously one, because of Printful, they'll handle all the shipping and logistics for you. And two, because of all the new cool AI tools, like some of the ones that I showed you in this tutorial that make creating these designs so much easier and a lot less time consuming.